After the Trade Federation had regained its footing following the failed invasion and occupation of Naboo, they commissioned a new class of dedicated warship for their fleets. The resulting vessel was the powerful and adaptable Providence class, which served with the Federation and the Confederacy of Independent Systems throughout the Separatist Crisis and the resulting Clone Wars. The ships of the Providence class were designed and built on the planet Pament by Free DAC Volunteers Engineering Corps, the Quarren Starship manufacturer also responsible for the Recusant class destroyer in use with the Commerce Guild. They designed the Providence to be modular, with multiple options for interior pieces. This allowed each ship to be configurable to fit a variety of different roles, from battleship to dedicated carrier. Tensor fields were utilised to maintain structural stability across these modular parts. The vessels had multiple reactors spread across their length, with vital reactors and other infrastructure maintained in a zero-gravity environment deep within the interior of the superstructure. The exterior of the hull was daubed in the standard blue markings of the CIS Navy, but unlike other, smaller Confederacy ships, it was thickly armoured on all sides. Further bolstering the ship's defences were a series of deflector and thermal shields, allowing them to withstand heavy laser fire and shrug off torpedoes. Many of these shields were focused around the bridge, which stood out proudly above the vessel's distinctive pointed prow. It was from here that the Providence's command crew controlled every function of the ship, surrounded by large, wide-angle windows. If these windows were breached, protective blast shields rapidly deployed to maintain an atmospheric seal for the organic members of the crew. After the vessels began service with the Confederacy Navy, the 900-strong crew were largely replaced with droids. Minimal atmospheric conditions were maintained for the few organics that remained, typically in key command positions or as occasional passengers. For their safety, escape pods were available to use on the access corridor to the bridge, across the flanks of the vessel, and on the tall, angled spire that extended from the rear of the ship. Atop this spire was the housing for the vessel's main interstellar communications and sensor pod. Below this was a command center with tactical screens and briefing tables within a large observation chamber, as well as private quarters for the ship's commanding officer, all accessible via a bank of five turbo lifts. Yet more communication and sensor masts were mounted along the vessel's spine, used to coordinate its complement of droid starfighters and ground forces. Both of these communication systems were routed through the Com Vault, a highly secure location locked away within the core of the ship. The main propulsion for each Providence class was provided by three Kraveld 4 radial ion drives, ironically manufactured by Nubia Star Drives, the creators of the J-Type 328 Nubian Starship used by Naboo Royalty. These powerful drives gave the ship a maximum acceleration of 2500 g, which allowed it to reach a maximum speed of 70 megalites per hour in space, or 2000 kilometers per hour in atmosphere. All of these were equipped with emergency booster engines for rapid changes in direction, assisted by by stabilizers for maintaining level flight. They also each had a set of deployable shields which deflected the ion particle streams from each drive, creating reverse thrust. If it was required, atmospheric deceleration could be further augmented via the deployment of flaps and drag fins from the vessel's outer hull. For hyperspace travel, each ship had a Class 1.5 primary hyperdrive, as well as a much slower Class 10 hyperdrive to act as a backup. Befitting the Providence class's status as a dreadnought, it had an extensive and varied armament of powerful weaponry. This consisted of 14 port and starboard quad turbo laser cannons, each with a maximum yield equivalent to a magnitude 10 earthquake. 34 dorsal and ventral dual heavy laser cannon turrets, 12 port and starboard twin light point defense ion cannons, and a pair of forward mounted battleship heavy ion cannons. Each side of the vessel was also dotted with 102 proton torpedo launchers and 10 heavy tractor beam emitters. The most unusual weapon system aboard were the 12 heavy flak guns, also known as mass driver cannons. Unlike the typical energy weapons mounted to warships, these fired high explosive projectiles, fed automatically from above, with spent shells ejecting from the weapon's primary heat dissipator. Each deck gun had its own built-in ion cannon mounted below its range and targeting processor, which was used to disrupt the deflector shields of the weapon's target. This allowed the projectile to pass straight through, causing significant damage to the hull behind it. While this armament was formidable, Providence-class captains typically held back while their considerable wing of droid starfighters engaged the enemy. These were multi-role, variable-geometry self-propelled battle droids Mark 1s, also known as Vulture-class droid fighters, backed up by advanced droid tri-fighters. 
if there was a need for heavier firepower, Hyena-class droid fighter bombers and heavy missile platform droid gunships armed with torpedoes, missiles and bombs could also be deployed. As the ships were modular, some also carried several hundred armoured ground vehicles such as multi-troop transports and armoured assault tanks for ground invasion. Each vessel could also carry over 48,000 active battle droids, and as they had a cargo capacity of over 18,000 metric tons, over a million deactivated battle droids. These were all coordinated from a dedicated command centre that was mounted on the dorsal surface amidships, overlooking the droid comlings. Despite their huge combat potential, the Providence class was first and foremost used as a command ship thanks to its extensive communication links and high running costs, relying on other Confederacy Navy vessels to screen them from direct engagement. This elevated operating cost compared to other CIS ships also led to them only being deployed when their vast capabilities were truly required. This was exemplified by the Invisible Hand, the first ship of the class to be completed. Newt Gunray, Viceroy of the Trade Federation, used it as his personal flagship until General Grievous demanded ownership of the vessel. Gunray objected to this due to the loss of one of Grievous's previous commands, the Malevolence, one of only a handful of enormous subjugator-class heavy cruisers the Confederacy had available. After the personal intervention of Darth Sidious, the Hand was transferred to General Grievous and became the command ship of the Confederacy. Navy. The vessel had a number of differences to others of its class, most notably the large through-deck hangar bay installed into the bulbous aft of the ship. Racks mounted to the ceiling of the bay carried hundreds of droid starfighters ready to be launched, and the deck was dotted with heavy lift platforms that descended to a number of ground vehicle storage bays beneath. The atmospheric shields for each entrance to the hangar were backed up by rapid deployment blast shields in case they were disabled. A number of smaller thrusters and reactors were relocated or replaced to make room for this expansive bay. Overall, the ship's three main reactors were capable of annihilating up to 12,000 tons of hypermatter fuel per second. These powered its upgraded Class I hyperdrive, as well as the huge array of weapons and defences at the disposal of the ship's Nemoidian captain, who was a holdover from its Trade Federation days. Further modifications included refitting the communications and sensor pod into a sanctum for Count Dooku, from where he broadcast unauthorised shadow feed transmissions across Holonet. General Grievous could also access the ship's droid comlink system from his cybernetics, allowing him to coordinate his forces directly. The Invisible Hand's final battle was the most dramatic of the war, a daring attack on Coruscant, the capital of the Republic. The Hand led a fleet of over 1,000 warships that completely overwhelmed the ill-prepared Coruscant Home Defence Fleet, and allowed Grievous to land on the surface and kidnap Chancellor Palpatine. After the arrival of Republic reinforcements, Jedi Generals Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker infiltrated the Hand and rescued the Chancellor, killing Count Dooku in the process. After taking heavy fire from the Gualara, a Venator class, and an altercation on the ship's bridge, the Hand entered the planet's atmosphere, breaking in half on the way. It was through the efforts of the two Jedi and their astromech droid R2-D2 that the front half was safely landed. Not long after the battle, the leaders of the Confederacy were killed by the newly anointed Darth Vader, causing the collapse of the Separatist movement and end of the Clone Wars. Most surviving Providence-class ships were decommissioned and scrapped on junkyard planets like Bracca, though a small minority eventually found their way into the hands of the Alliance to Restore the Republic, once more fighting the warships of the Galactic Government.